Hey guys, so we're going to be explaining a little bit more about AID as a whole to begin with. So AID stands for Agua Clara Infrastructure Design Engine. And so one problem that we've faced since Agua Clara's inception is that we've wanted to serve communities of different sizes and populations. And these communities have specific demands for how much drinking water that they need in a given day, a given month, or in a given year. And so we need to plan out different water treatment plants for each community. And that's where AID comes in. AID allows us to automatically redesign water treatment plant designs by taking in a single variable, flow rate, and then running calculations based off of that. We can then redesign the 3D models of these plant designs. So AID functions as a collection of interconnected modules, each with their own purpose. So data passes between the user's computer and between different cloud-based internet services. So in the cloud, we use Onshape and FeatureScript to build these 3D models. And so Onshape is a 3D modeling service, which is really cool because it functions entirely online in your browser. And FeatureScript is an accompanying programming language for Onshape, which allows us to create custom features and designs within Onshape. On the user's computer, there are also two important Python modules that are very helpful to us, one of which is Onshape Pi, which allows us to pass data from the user's computer into Onshape 3D models, and also Agua Clara Design, which allows us to calculate the changes between each uh, water treatment plant design. And so data that is processed in Agua Clara Design on the user's computer passes all the way up to the cloud in Onshape where we can then affect the 3D models of our water treatment plant designs. So as an introduction to aid design, we write Python code that helps calculate plant dimensions. And these calculations are based off of the knowledge that's been gained over the past few years in Agua Clara. So as aid template creates the 3D models for a given plant component, we can then write code that will reconfigure what that 3D model is going to look like and how it's going to function. So for example, here's the Python class and Onshape model for the alpha linear flow orifice meter. Uh, in the Python class, we store the URL that links to the Onshape model that you can see on your right. And so then when a user wants to create and redesign a new alpha, they simply run what is in the bottom line of the code and creates a new alpha for a given flow rate. So what that does is it runs the calculations to see different parameters of the alpha, such as like the height and number of orifices in it, and then goes and changes the on-shape model online. So our code uses an object-oriented approach to uh, compartmentalize these calculations. In our old model, which you can see above, we had a function-oriented approach where uh, each uh, function would describe a given uh, parameter for the component. But this model led, them, led to many errors with not knowing what to put into these uh, parameters and also like not having them consistent among different functions. So our new object-oriented approach allows us to reason about these plant components as one single thing in Python code and then run calculations on it much more, uh, much, in a much more standardized way. My name is Swastik and I'm going to be talking more about what AID Design has completed this semester. So one of the things that we've done is we've completed the flocculator and sedimentation tank design code. So previously, the entrance tank actually had its own Python class with functions that calculated its, its dimensions. But we examined this code, and we found that the entrance tank was very closely related to the flocculator. So we decided to merge the functions of the entrance tank class into the flocculator class. And to consolidate all the information effectively, we edited the flocculator functions so that they could account for the parameters of the entrance tank. In addition, we've also improved the readability of the flocculator class. Previously, there were functions which had several lines of code to calculate dimensions, and at times this was, this was unreadable and a mess to sort through, um, especially to users not in aid design who would be looking at this code. So what we did is we created helper functions, and we also changed the variable names so they would be more descriptive so that 
anyone who's viewing the code can tell which variables correlate to which functions and can have a better idea of what the variables actually mean instead of just um, instead of names that don't give much information. Um, like Oliver mentioned, we're improving our code to have a more object-oriented approach. So instead of uh, being a jumble of functions and constants, it's actually more readable and, and sorted in classes. So within our code, uh, we've written functions that calculate the specific dimensions of the set tank as well. A couple examples of this include the minimum inner width of each diffuser in the set tank and the maximum velocity through the manifold of the set tank. And we're focusing on calculating more hydro hydraulic calculations, such as water and the properties of water, instead of geometric calculations, such as the physical size and dimensions of the set tank. And the eight template team will be working more uh, with the geometric calculations in Onshape. So another thing we've done is we've also added expert inputs for the LFOM and the flocculator. So this is, this is broken into regular user versus expert user. So how this works is a regular user would just want to create a minimum viable product and would have not much consideration for how exactly the flocculator is built. So when they initialize a flocculator object, the only parameter that's going to be included is the flow rate, which is Q. However, for an expert user, they would want more control of control over how the flocculator is created and built. So they can input, they can initialize more inputs such as flow rate, head loss, uh, total fluid water deformation, temperature, and so on. And the reason this is helpful is because it breaks it down into regular versus expert. It breaks it down into a person who wants control of how it's being built versus a person who's just initializing an object just to complete the plan. Lastly, we've also implemented max and min utility functions. So what these two functions do is for max, it spits out the max value of a data set, and for min, it spits out the min value of a data set. And this, is a, this is helpful, uh, like as said, as a general utility function if, um, if, an, if a user ever needs to find out the maximum of a data set or the minimum of a data set. We have implemented more standardized testing and documentation. For testing, we use PyTest, and for documentation, we use the Google style guide. Um, we use PyTest because in the future, if people want to make changes to the code, we want to make sure that the functions are still doing exactly what they're doing right now, what they're supposed to be doing. And we use the Google style guide for documentation because through Sphinx, we can automatically create a website containing this documentation, and it's um, easy access for anyone to view. Um, this standardization is important because it allows future teams to understand the code and make sure the code is still doing what it's supposed to do. And it also allows users to easily see what the functions are supposed to be calculating. Following our work on the sedimentation tank design code, we are currently working on the filter design code. Much like um, the said tank, we are currently in the process of implementing multiple functions. For instance, we have to be able to calculate the number of orifices in one branch or the spacing between them. We need to provide tests for each functions using PyTest and documentation using the Google style guide. Um, thus far, a challenge we have faced has been familiarizing ourselves with how um, to calculate certain things. And a way that we have overcome this challenge is by working with Monroe and other team members and also referencing and familiarizing ourselves with the textbook. We also have to manage the relation between the filter and other components, but this hasn't been as difficult as with the said tank because the filter is not as reliant as other parts as the said tank is. In addition to the filter design code, we are also in the process of improving the pipe design code. Last semester, we worked on creating a more object-oriented approach, and we want to improve this um, by we want to improve this by having a better approach to chain together pipes. For example, using doubly linked lists, pipes are realistically chained together, uh, and we want to apply this to the code so we can work. Um, on the entire pipeline rather than individual separate pipes. 
Being able to work on the entire pipeline makes it much easier to calculate head loss or velocity of water that's going through the pipe. Underneath the filter, between the entrance and exit tanks of the filter, there are a complex set of pipes that go into the filter box. Improving upon the design code for the pipe will help design the filter. Having good pipe design will allow us to use it with the template team's pipe library in Onchain. Hi, my name is Selena, and I'll be talking about some of the work that we have planned for the future. First, we plan to create a compositional class to put together all of the plant components we have created so far. This means that we would be placing objects within other objects, as opposed to the inheritance design where we pass down fields and create subclasses. We want to create a compositional class to place objects within other objects. For instance, set tank bay is within the set tank class. We also would need to pass down expert input fields. And the plant class in general would allow, all, um, allow for us to look at the entire class as a whole. And this is beneficial because there are different components within the plant that depend on each other. For example, the entrance tank and the flocculator are very close to each other and they rely on each other. Second, we want to work on Onshape client integration. Right now, we require Onshape login, passwords, um, and usernames to be able to change the design itself. We want to instead be able to have anonymous configurations that allow temporary 3D components to be modeled in the Onshape, um, so it can be edited without logins. This will allow people with URL to be able to calculate and pass values through Onshape and visualize the plant. Finally, we plan to implement caching for pine units. Uh, caching is beneficial for our design because with caching, we are able to pass value or store the values um, and access it more efficiently rather than having to calculate it every time that it's needed as shown in the diagram. Currently, caching for our design only works with non-pine units. So when we do use caching for pine units, there seems to be errors, so we want to implement some changes that will allow us to work um, or get the benefit of caching with Pine units. Um, finally, if you have any questions and recommendations, please feel free to reach us through these emails. Um, and this is our appendix. Thank you for watching. <laughs>